and welcome and thank you for joining me today. My name is Leo Kakunis. Some of you may know me from across the Cape Cod and Bassville County, but I am a recovering politician. And to fill my time now, I'm out interviewing the candidates. So today, we're going to be doing a little bit of that. Um, a lot of people in Bassville County don't realize that March 3rd, coming up very, very quickly, is an important date for us here. We do have a primary race, and there are going to be a number of different elections that are going to be on that race. Some of them are going to affect us as general residents, us as Democrats, and us as Republicans. One in particularly today, in the first interview that I'm going to be doing, is in regards to the both Republican committee man position and re Republican committee woman position. But joining me today is Adam Lang. Adam, thank you very much for coming. Leo, and thank you for interviewing me today. You took time away from your farm to come in here. Thank you. Well, you know, I, I appreciate uh, you coming, and thank you because you are going to be my first interview in this uh, right. kind of like a new venture that I'm going down. So, right. uh, And I, I know you are heading into a new venture, but before we go there, Adam, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I understand you're from Brewster. You're a neighbor of mine. I'm from Howard, so yeah. you do live in Brewster. I'm from Brewster. I uh, retired in 2016. I had a 30-year career in corporate America, clawing my way up the ladder. I learned a few things. Uh, retired early, so now I'm back. I'm bouncing off the walls, thinking, how can I give back to my community? So a couple things I'm doing. One is um, I'm an on-call fireman EMT in Brewster. And also, I want to uh, run for office so we can have a healthy two-party system on Cape Cod. You know, and you say that run for office, and as I opened the show, I said I'm a recovering politician. So believe me, uh, I, I am thankful for what you're doing because we do need a lot of people to get out there and get involved in our government. But it is a big undertaking, right. and uh, the particular position that you're running for I have to admit, at, at one point, I really didn't understand it that well. And can you just remind myself and the uh, listeners and viewers, sure. it's, it's the Republican committee man's position. Yeah. Um, so, again, I'm from corporate America. And when you work for a big corporation, they have functional homerooms. So if you worked in engineering, there would be an engineering homeroom. Takes the care and feeding of the engineers. Yeah. Right? Career managers or careers and whatnot. Well, in the Republican Party in Massachusetts, we have a total of 80, 40 committee men, 40 committee women, and they report to now Jim Lyons, who chairs Mass GOP. So the money, the funding, the direction of the party, that all comes out of the homeroom. So our job is to attract the right kind of candidates and make them successful, grow the Republican Party in Massachusetts. Yeah, I kind of use the term uh, when the people ask me a little bit about it is you're almost like the cheerleader for the uh, Republican Party locally because once again, you're going to be on the March 3rd ballot, but the people that are going to see your name on the mm -hmm. ballot are only going to be of a certain district. Is that correct? And that's like Provincetown to, uh, do it, you know the line yeah. down in the sandwich? Or? It goes by it's, uh, Cape and Islands. Yep. Uh, so it's everything from Mashpee East out to Pete Town, Martha's Vineyard, or Nantucket. Okay, and then there's a second one that is called the uh, Bonstable Plymouth. Bonstable Plymouth, that's okay. right. And that it's takes the remaining sandwich, part. Falmouth, and, and Plymouth. And, and over to Plymouth, okay. Right. So right. the people basically here in Bonstable County will be seeing right. your name up there. Right. Uh, I have to ask this question because I yes. ask all my my political, uh, especially right. newbies. I hope it's not a hard question. No, it's going to be Go easy. <laughs> you know, what is bringing you to the table to run for this All particular right. piece? Why is Adam right. Lang throwing his hat in his ring at this That's time a fair question. for this position, too? And if I blow this question, no one should vote for me. There right? you go. Why am well. I running? That's why you're asking. <laughs> so I'm an engineer, right? So I go by numbers. So when I got back, I was away for 30 years. I started, this place has really changed. It doesn't feel like Barnstable County anymore politically. I started looking at the numbers. Now, Donald Trump in 2016 got over 54,000 votes in Barnstable County alone. We have a strong base here, conservative base. We're the minority, don't get me wrong, but a strong conservative base. Then I started looking at Republicans, and we lost about 3,000 Republicans since 2010. 
So what's happened? Well, when you say you lost 3,000 Republicans, yes. what do you mean by that statement? That means that someone walked down to their town hall, was so fed up with the Republican Party, they said, I can't take it anymore. Make me unenrolled. Make me a Democrat. Make me anything but Republican. <laughs> I'm raising my hand because well, I did that. <laughs> so, I, And I want you to weigh in, even though you're interviewing me, yeah. if you could weigh in because we also, we lost about 3,000 Republicans. We also lost some key really talented, well-respected folks from the party. Jimmy Crocker, yourself, why did they leave the Republican Party? So I'm going to let you answer in a minute, but well, I'm, I'm doing my little you, listening so. tour with uh, mostly first responders, tradesmen, blue-collar people. They may not even be Republicans, but they're conservatives. And I say, hey, why don't you come to my RTC, Republican Town Committee, get involved. They typically tell me I'm wasting my time. That party is no longer our voice. That's what I'm hearing. So you must now, because we all feel that you are going to get elected, and hopefully I mean, well, I I, I'm going to so. say this to all the candidates that come in, so it means nothing from coming from me, but when you get elected, <laughs> what are some of the things that Adam Lang is going to bring to the table that sure. is not being done presently, okay. that our current uh, state committee man, right. who is going to be your... Um, is, is he's running against you, or you're running against him? So yeah, he's, right. he's he's your competitive. Right. Um, what he has not done, and basically what you're going to be doing different that okay. you think people should. Uh, All right. Vote for you. First, I'll talk about myself than my opponent. So I have a track record here on Cape Cod. Google Adam Lang. All right. Google Adam Lang, and you will find a lot of op-eds, letters. Uh, Trump rallies. Political activists. I'm a conservative voice on the Cape. I go off Cape and testify on immigration. I'm involved. I'm active. Okay? My opponent has had a strategy of being moderate. So you're something to everybody. That's been the strategy. It's been a disaster for the party. It's been a disaster. So, does he have a recovery plan? I don't think so. In fact, I'm hearing it's more of the same. So if we go down that road, I can predict we're going to lose more Republicans, more Republican seats from our district. And do you have any specific things that you may plan to bring to the table once you're elected? I mean, I yes. think uh, I, I, I reached out when I was a uh, registered Republican at the time, wanted to know why the Republican Party wasn't doing more things like the Democratic Party was doing. They have sure. training seminars. They reach out to the young. Do you have anything like that that you're right. thinking about bringing forward? So whenever I deal with a problem in my life now, because I've had 30 years in corporate America, I ask myself, what's the value proposition of the Cape and Islands Republican Party? Is it a country club party? <laughs> because that's where they have all their events, right? That's their demographic. Go to an RTC. Are there young people there? Typically not. So that's what's missing. How do we attract them? We start creating value for those people. There's conservative young people on Cape Cod. A lot of them are in the trades. A lot of them are first responders. We need to create value for them. That means we need to be their voice and be doing things that they want to be a part of, right? They have a sense of being with the Republican Party. And you don't feel that that's being done at all at this particular time with the current uh, uh, I could argue by looking at the numbers, it's been a disaster, <laughs> this strategy, all right? Um, I think this is, we started out talking about the position being the uh, Republican State Committee man. And I mentioned mm -hmm. at the beginning of this show that there is also going to be on a ballot State Committee woman. I don't want people to think that I'm being... Um, I don't know what, uh, politi in politically correct, but that's actually the term for this position. So you are the, misogynistically. Yeah, I'm not I'm sure what, you know, why they divided it like that, but they did. And, uh, <laughs> they did. Um, it, as the Republican state committee man, you've already kind of drawn attention to, and I have also, that there are a lot of people who left the Republican Party, and they are Legally, they're really unenrolled. They mm -hmm. refer to themselves as independents. Mm -hmm. But on the March 3rd election, can you just touch on the fact of those people, when they come to the door, they can ask for a either Republican or Democratic ballot, right. and they basically will have the opportunity to uh, vote, if they pick the Republican one, for either yourself, 
or against my, or your, my your opponent, opponent, my incumbent. Yeah. And I understand also uh, Mr. Trump is going to be on that ballot. Mr. Trump, and I think yeah. he has a Massachusetts opponent uh, right. uh, on there also. I, uh, right. I, I'm not sure if I think it was the ex-governor that uh, is going to be on there. So if you could just kind of remind those unenrolled, if you will, sure. or let us know what an unenrolled voter so is supposed to do. The, the good thing for voters is my opponent and I are different. He is a moderate, all right, to a fault, I would argue, but he's a moderate. I'm a Trump guy. I always have been. I'm a Trump guy today. I'll be a Trump guy tomorrow. So if you're a Trump guy, you know who you should vote for, okay? If you're a moderate and you feel probably don't want to vote for me because I'm a Trump guy, right? So voters have a decision to make. If you're going to pull a Republican ballot, you're going to see Trump up top, right? He's got a couple folks running against him, so he's being primaried. And then down below, you'll see committee man, committee woman. All okay. Right? But again, as um, an independent, I just want to remind those people out there that as an independent or unenrolled registered voter, I do have the option when I walk through do. that door <clears throat> to decide sure. whether I want a Democratic ballot or yep. a Republican ballot. And you will not be on the Democratic one because, again, your seat is the state Republican committee man. So they have to ask for and pull a Republican ballot to, in fact, vote for you or your, your candidate, your right. Uh, uh, opposition. Right. And, and also, you know, my opponent has chosen not to be vocal, not to push back against the agenda of, let's say, our state senator, Julian Sear. So what we have is Julian Sear running unopposed. Uh, I'm not talking about an election, but day to day rolling out his agenda for our community, and it's a, it's a, uh, it runs across the grain of conservative values, right? We have social programs being rolled out, sanctuary policies, safe injection sites. These are the things I have an expectation as a Republican that my representatives are speaking out and pushing back against these kind of policies in our Barnstable County community. Do you have anything else specifically that you might think you're going to bring to the table that's a little different than what your current opponent is doing also? Because, again, I, I'm trying to really reach out to those people. And you mentioned sure. earlier and you wanted me to comment on why I left the Republican Party. And you've pretty much summed it up. I feel as if the Republican Party wasn't really looking out for my best interest. Mm -hmm. And I also had a problem with a lot of the Republicans here on the Cape, especially in or Massachusetts, I should broaden it, um, they don't and still don't to this day support our president and our president is a Republican mm -hmm. like it or not he mm -hmm. is a Republican and the party I felt should really be behind him um, right. whether they agree with him whether they voted for him or not he's still the leader of the Republican Party and in, in the best interest so to try to gain that support that interest and build the party I think that's what I'm getting from you. You're trying to build the party sure. down here on the Cape. Do you have any other specific things that you might want to bring up to tell our listeners about that will kind of well, say, well, gee, that's a different thought. You know, yeah, I know we yeah. talked about the youth, um, and we talked a little bit about different programs that you might uh, be instituting, but just kind of throwing it out there in case I, you had something else you wanted to mention. I think people are frustrated and they're hungry for leadership, and there's been a lack of it on the Cape and Islands. So say what you might about Trump. Now, they say polls, polls are telling us 90% of Republicans now approve of Trump, all right? I really don't care about how the Democrats feel about Trump. I'm very concerned about Republicans. He's pulled together the party by being a strong conservative voice. As an executive, when I was working, they used to rate us one of the leadership attributes would be doing the right thing even when unpopular. Trump does the right thing even when I'm popular. I will continue doing the right thing even when I'm popular on the Cape and Islands and being a strong voice for conservatives. Is there any way that you want to let our listeners out there know how to either uh, back you, learn more about you? Do you have a Facebook page? Do you have a contact number that they can I do. I'm very active to? on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, it's a food fight every day there. You're all invited to it. If you uh, just look up Adam Lang Cape GOP, and my website is uh, adamlanggop.com. You can get a hold of me either way, my phone number and all the contact 
yeah. is on either one of those. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else we wanted to add to our listeners or anything? Uh, just to come out March 3rd and vote, that's really important. This is going to be a low voter turnout for Republicans because our president uh, is, you know, has it in the bag, so to say. But there's other people on the ballot. It's important that we gain control of the Republican Party in Massachusetts and, and get it back to basics with conservative values in the Republican Party. Let me ask you one more thing before we wind sure. it up here. Um, you know, I'm, a lot of people know me and, and hopefully watching the show will remember me when I was a politician. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest problems I had was uh, learning about uh, the steps to take when I'm getting into politics. When you're the new state committee man, would you consider having uh, local classes on educating people on how to run, not so much for the president, I mean, let's bring it down a few notches. Mm -hmm. Uh, state well, rep maybe, sure. local selectmen in your town maybe, yeah. getting people involved in their school committees. I understand yeah. you were a school committee, weren't you involved I, in the school committee for I a was while? Not, I've been involved with school issues in Brewster. I think it's really important we uh, build that farm team, so to say, and that happens right in your town, right? right. You're going to learn about government. I'm learning from a fire hose now, right? I'm going off Cape for my campaign trading, yeah. and I certainly will, will learn from this campaign and would love sharing that with others. And we'll bring people uh, on Cape from Mass GOP to strengthen our party here uh, in our district. Good. All right. Great. And if you don't think this is a grassroots campaign, why would I have a farmer interviewing me? Leo? There you go. All right. And thank God they're shooting us from the waist <laughs> up, too, because we both got dirty no, dungarees no, on, but we, we won't go there. Go there. <laughs> Adam, thank right. you very, very much for joining right, me. Leo, Good luck you. to you, and I, and I wish you the best as you All move right. forward. Thank you. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Once again, Leo Kakunas, recovering politician, coming out with these Meet the Candidates little segments to try to educate the people here in Bonstable County what's going to be on their ballot come March 3rd, 2020. Thanks again.